Hi there, Stephanie here. I want to give a little bit of information about progress monitoring. This time of year, teachers are starting to do a bit of monitoring, and I wanted to see if I could provide a little bit of clarification. So progress monitoring is a specific type of assessment. It is specifically designed to measure student growth and to give teachers feedback about their instruction. So when you're choosing a tool for progress monitoring, you wanna have some specific criteria in mind. This is not just monitoring progress. This is progress monitoring with a capital P and a capital M. So you need a tool that's designed for that specific purpose. So it really should be a standardized assessment with scripted directions, scripted scoring rules and so forth. It should really be an indicator of essential or critical early literacy skills. It should be brief because you're going to repeat it over and over again across time. And these criteria sound familiar. These are the same criteria we want for selecting a screening assessment. But here's where the difference is. Screening assessments need to be predictive of future reading performance. Progress monitoring tools need to be sensitive to growth over short periods of time. That means that they also have to come with many alternate forms that are at the same level of difficulty. So you wanna hold that monitoring level or difficulty level constant over time so that as the student is acquiring more and more skills, you will see their performance increase over time. You'll actually be able to see their learning on a graph. So it takes a very specific type of assessment. You want to use your progress monitoring to make decisions, very specific decisions, about should you continue with instruction the way that it has been, or should you make a change? So the only reason to do progress monitoring is to give you that feedback loop about your instruction. If you haven't changed instruction, if you're not providing some kind of intervention, there might not be a good reason to do progress monitoring. So you wanna definitely keep that in mind. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, like you're having to do progress monitoring with too many students, that's usually a good sign that you might wanna take a step back and revisit your tier one instruction. You might even wanna put a pause on monitoring all of those students who you're intervening with and take more of a systems approach. Look at your curriculum and instruction, look at your instructional routines and methods and approaches, look at the way you're grouping students for that tier one instruction. See if you can get a better match between their needs and the instruction that you're providing to all of your class in tier one. And then perhaps select a few students, maybe the ones you're most concerned about, maybe a student in each of the small groups to do some progress monitoring with so you get a little sense of what that's like. But if you find that half of your class is at risk, they all need some type of intervention or change to their instruction, that's probably going to overwhelm you with too much progress monitoring. Okay, so some ideas to think about what progress monitoring is, how to select a tool that will be actually helpful for doing progress monitoring, and what to think about if you find yourself needing to monitor too many students.